Okay. Hi, my name is Aisha Seku. I'm the executive director and founder of Street Corner Resources. Uh, the organization was initially found, founded uh, for around education, employment, and training and to bring those resources to young people uh, in the community. But at the core of our work is anti-violence work, helping young people to make good decisions and uh, to help eliminate gun and gang violence in Harlem. Uh, my feeling about some of the interactions that young people have with the police or that the police have with young people is that the responsibility uh, in good, good community behavior and good policing is is on both. It's on the community, so it's on the young person and on the police officer. And the reason why I say that is, is because young people are often stop, frisked, and searched. Uh, and how that actually happens will tell how the situation plays out often. And one of the major complaints that I hear from young people is that they're often stopped. They're often stopped, and they're stopped at times that they feel like they're not doing anything. And that usually happens either before school, after school, on their way to play basketball, coming from playing basketball, or just what they call chilling on the block, which means that they could be standing on the corner or on a stoop, you know, in front of their building where they live. And so um, a lot of the complaints that I've heard from young people, and we've taken testimony uh, around uh, community policing, um, community policing and the young men that showed up and we've given these just for, for clarity we've given this testimony to Commissioner Kelly we did have a meeting with him and we gave him a testimony from young men one of the things though uh, that we heard con consistently was that young men felt like they were being stopped far too often and that in that stop that they were not always being treated in the way that the police department says that they would treat people. And that's courtesy, uh, professionalism, and respect, CPR. Courtesy, professionalism, and respect. They felt like that this was not really, not real, that this uh, motto was not a real motto that officers were living by. And instead, they would often be treated in a way that was uh, mean or unbecoming of an officer. Uh, case in point, there's a young man who was uh, stopped on 7th Avenue, and he was uh, walking with his, uh, from what I understand, his mother. And he was asked to stop, and he said, you know, why do you have to keep stopping me, you know, so or stopping me. And he kept, continued to just walk away. And the off, other off, one officer that asked him to stop, and the other officers jumped out of a car and commenced to kicking him and beating him, according to him. And I know I saw the end result of that, which was a face that was uh, cracked. He had a, 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 a broken jaw, from what I understand, or a cracked face. His eye was uh, protruding and bloody and so forth. And he said that he hadn't done anything. Uh, you know, it's oftentimes a hard call. You know, I get, I, I get uh, an opportunity to talk to young people often. And I also get an opportunity to interact with the police department and you know, the officials, uh, inspectors over the commanding officers over those uh, precincts. And so I hear both sides. I'm hearing young people say that they want to be respected more, that if they have to be stopped, that that should happen in a certain way. And I'm hearing officers say that they're so worried about guns and there's a lot of pressure on them to make X amount of arrests or there's uh, a lot of fear because at the end of the day, officers want to go home, so they're often fearing that they're stopping someone who may be armed and that as a result, they're acting in a manner out of that fear. So anytime you have a gun and you're acting out of the fear of another gun being present, that the behavior is very different. And we know that statistically, I mean, I was reading something yesterday about that. Uh, so you often wind up with an officer who uh, is aggressive and a young person who is just as afraid as the officer. Now, in an opportunity to, in order to, to have an opportunity for better community engagement, both sides have to seriously take the responsibility to say we have to do this differently. And because it's not going to just get better if the community blames the police 
or if the police blames the community, that we need to have constant dialogue, we need to have constant watch, we need to have constant reporting, and we need to have the opportunity to first police our streets in a certain way, you know, to make sure that young people are not acting in a manner that's not good. So before the police actually come in. And I have to say, I've been in situations where I ask uh, police office, officers to allow me to talk with young people when they may have asked for young people to move. We just recently had a situation on 8th Avenue where an officer shot a young man and it appeared that the young man was not armed, okay? But it made the community very angry. Young people were outraged and they wanted to take action. And myself and other community people were out there and I asked community people to please help us keep it peaceful out there. So when the police began to move in to ask people to move, young people were getting more and more upset. And so what we did as community members, I just simply asked people, help, let's help to move people. And I asked people, I said, look, we don't want a situation that becomes worse or ugly when it doesn't have to. And it was, I think that it's important for the community to use the voice of reason before it gets so emotional. And that's what happened. As a result, we moved the crowd uh, and we talked to people and we told them what they could do if they had a complaint. You can call the Civilian Complaint Review Board. You can email the commissioner. You can uh, call the local precinct and ask why this happened. You can attend the community, council, uh, community precinct council meeting and use your voice there in terms of what you'd like to see happen in your community with the police in the community, uh, that there were things that they could do. But to incite another situation is not going to make it better. There's ways that people, if you want to protest something, then there's ways to have some protest that is organized in a manner not to get people hurt. 